How you doing? Ah, ta, 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 ta. I wouldn't do that. Four to one odds for both of us, you know. Sit down. Sit down. Put the gun on the table. That's it. That's it. There you go. All right. You know, for a man with a company who specializes in sonar, your home security system is surprisingly inept. Lying, Mr. Dennett. You know, it's like a vice. You know, you do it once, feel, it feels good, you know? You want to do it again. And in your case, you know, you do it again and again and again until it's pretty much ingrained in your business model. But luckily for you, I'm here to offer some corporate advice. You know, I was unaware this was a board of directors meeting. No, 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 no. It's better than a board of directors meeting because unlike the pawns that sit on your board, I'm actually here on behalf of your shareholders. You're trash who kills people. No, 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 no. See, I kill bad people. And you, you're a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? Oh. You own a $70 billion security company and I broke into your home. You don't think I know what your business ethics are like? Come on, Mr. Dennett. Well, you shorted $11.5 billion from your year end reporting so you could bankroll the nefarious enterprises that you 
are in business with, all the while undervaluing your stock so you could buy back the controlling interest for cheap. Now, you must have never really got the whole fiduciary responsibility thing, but no one ever said a CEO had to know about that, did they? <laughs> Believe me, you don't think we've been on it before? If we were lying on our books, the whole world would have known. No, no, see, because you, you, you took out a good insurance package, Michael Bennett. And kudos to you. Anyway, hey, you, you want to see something cool? You, come here. I'll watch this, you know. You know what that was? That was capitalism in real time. See, they worked for you, but I paid them more. Well, I paid, I paid those two, not, not him, of course. You know. Can't pay everybody, Mr. Dennett, you know that. All right, Michael, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to the press and tell them about this little misrepresentation of your company's entire financial profile. Then, in detail, you're going to explain the nefarious enterprises that you are in business with. And I'm not gonna kill you in your own home. Sounds like a pretty good deal. Don't worry, you're rich. They'll, they'll send you to some prison where they serve we're with Chris on the weekends, you know, you're, you're not gonna miss a beat, buddy. Well, alrighty then. I'm a wolf, Mr. Dennett. Don't make me come back here. You know, I think we got a lot done today, Michael. Well, that's a shame, Mr. Dennett. London. Pleasure to finally meet you. Likewise, Mr. Secretary. Please, sir. So, you're the best Langley could offer, huh? Well, best is a relative term, sir. Well, relative to the U.S. government, and they seem to think so. I'm sure the thought wasn't unanimous. Didn't need to be unanimous, it needed to be a majority. Well, then how could you know for certain? <laughs> Thing is, you never really do. Most things in life require one quality, intuition. I'm sure you have a little bit of that. I may have some, sir. Humility, Mr. London, is a good virtue. But I can tell you one thing with confidence. You would not be here if you only had a little bit. I'm sure you've heard about Dennett Industries in the past couple days. Yeah, I mean, the CEO of the biggest security tech company in the world was killed in his own home. It's, it's not the most reassuring thing. Well, whoever got past the security system 
also managed to get past their entire security detail. Security detail? Yes, sir. Like his gate guard? Well, his gate guard and four other armed men. This man had five private armed security officers in his home? Well, it's security. Should they have been unarmed? Were they contracted? Yes. Seems like an unusual expense for someone with a Fortune 500 security company. Maybe so, Mr. London. But everything we know is right here, and we still know far too little. Dennett Industries has multiple U.S. contracts. That means access to confidential information, things that could threaten national security. You wanted tuition? Here you go. Whoever did this, that's what they're after. Well, for a lot of good things about you, Mr. London. Trying to find out if anybody was lying to me. No need to worry, sir. Oh, and also, don't hesitate to reach out if you need any resources. I have a few friends who owe me. Are you the new guy? I'm sorry? The new guy. The person who is new. The opposite of old. <laughs> yeah, well, in a way. I was transferred from another department. Yeah, I already knew that. <laughs> then why'd you ask? I don't know. It seemed like the nice thing to do. Yeah, I guess it was. You're from Langley? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. How old do you think I am? I was just trying to be respectful. Yes, I'm very aware of the logic behind why somebody would use the formality ma'am, but ask yourself this. How many times have you addressed a woman with that and she responded with the same insecure question about her age? Yeah. That's actually a good point. Thank you. So have you ever shot your gun? So have you ever shot your gun? So have you ever shot your gun? Was that an inappropriate question? Often people have a different threshold for what they find inappropriate and what they don't. It can be difficult to identify sometimes. Oh, no, I don't think it's inappropriate. But, uh, yes, I have. I've never liked guns. Yet you chose a job that required you to carry one? That's not why I picked it. Well, then why'd you pick it? You know when you're in grade school and the teacher tells you that cliche sentiment that you're gonna grow up and change the world? Well, I actually believed it when they told me. Spent my whole life fixated on the ideology. Problem was, I'm not a diplomat. I'm good with numbers. Sometimes numbers are better than people. They're more definitive, at least. So I got a job here. It didn't take me long to figure out you can't really change the world behind a computer screen. I think you'd be surprised. Hmm. I'm Annette. London. You don't seem like the kind of person to work behind a desk often. No? Not really, but hey. Changes in perspective might lead to new revelations. Yeah. Yeah, they might. Anyways, it was nice to meet you. You're welcome. Here for the party? Yeah. I think I'm a little late though. Not that late. Yeah? How's that? Why do you think we're still here? Not a whole lot of evidence around this place. Probably got more than I got. You'd be surprised. Yeah, my day's been full of surprises, pal. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, whoever did this, very professional. No prints, took the security footage with them. They're good. 
However, they did leave some ammo magazines, but only the ones that belonged to the five guys on the security team. Who were you with, anyway? The, uh, the Department of Treasury. <laughs> the Department of Treasury? What, was he guilty of tax evasion? <laughs> a full-scale government intervention never really surprises me. Well, if the government's got a check to burn, you best believe they're gonna burn it somehow. Yeah. Do you, uh, you mind if I go take a look? That was fast. Yeah, well, turns out the advice you gave me, it's pretty useful. I didn't give you any advice. Oh, technically, no. But inadvertently, you're pretty sharp with it. Pencils are sharp. People are not sharp. So what did you find out? Well, okay, so Porter Smith, right? Porter Smith is the firm contracted to handle all of Mr. Dennett's property. Now, Porter Smith netted $868 million in their EBIT last year. $868 million. I mean, in the world of security companies, you're pretty much a privatized military. Any firm that has that kind of capital definitely standardizes their firearms. One man from the break-in had a P-22 magazine on him. The other four, the M981. Don't you think that's a bit of a steep assessment? Yeah, a little bit. But I found out that Porter Smith has a decent percent stake in Fiera, which is an Italian company that makes the M9A1. And they don't have any stake in the Carl Walter, which makes the P22. Did they ID him? No, they didn't. But he had this. Newman House? See, I don't know about you, but I didn't think professional killers walked around with business cards on them. So you're telling me a team of FBI agents were at the scene for three days and they couldn't figure this out? Don't you think it's a little odd that the Department of Treasury was so keen to take the lead on this case? Don't you think it's a little out of their field of concern? We work for the government. When have they ever decided anything was out of their field of concern? By the way, a package came for you. No return label? I took you more for a Sherlock Holmes rather than a J.P. Morgan. No Pacholi? I'm genuinely surprised you know who that is. Look, it's a... Uh, it's just a copy of the balance sheet they gave me in the Dennett brief. London. These are different. Sorry? They're from the same fiscal period, but the reportings aren't synchronous. How so? The capital expenditures on the one you got from the mail are higher than the one from the brief. The revenues are also higher. Why would the numbers be different? Maybe they were lying. What would they lie for? I wasn't trying to... Well, there could be a number of reasons. Doing them individually, likely because you don't want the public to know where your money's coming from or where it's being spent. Doing them at the same time... They wanted to devalue their company. Short the value of their outstanding stock, purchasing it as treasury for the lowest possible price, then reporting the actual numbers the following fiscal period. Basically artificially growing a company that's already just as big. 
It's not exactly an original idea, but it's pretty rare corporations will get away with doing it. Yep. Looks like this is gonna be pretty complicated for you. It's always complicated. You're a tough man to find, Mr. Fisher. I'll give you that. <laughs> well, clearly not that tough. Maybe. Look, I don't want to take up a lot of your time here, but there are some unusual circumstances right now. It's an interesting way of putting it. Interesting way of putting what? CEO of one of the biggest companies in the world was shot and killed in this home. I think calling that unusual is a bit of a mitigation, Mr. London. Hmm. I think it depends on who you're discussing the matter with. Well, yeah, I guess, but the U.S. government was a really big customer of Michael Dennett, so if anyone's downplaying his death, it's not you guys. I think you'd be surprised how many tech contractors the government has on speed dial. <laughs> you know, I really don't think I would be. Yeah, maybe not. Look, some of the questions I'm going to ask you today, Mr. Fisher, might seem a little silly but I do need them for an official report, so can you confirm you work for a CPA firm, Standard & Fisher? <laughs> yes, yes I do. And can you describe the nature of your firm's relationship with Denon Industries? I think it was about five years ago. Denon Industries contacted us about doing some audits for them, which we agreed to do, and then continued doing that on a year-end basis since about 2015, I believe. Maybe. And are they the only company you audit for? No, no, uh, we check the books for three other public companies, actually, and some local businesses, which is interesting because in this industry, if you get a Fortune 500 contract, you can pretty much charge whatever you want for your firm rate, but I guess luckily for me, I just never really cared to make a whole bunch of money. Okay. Look, no offense, Mr. Fisher, but why did Denna Industries contract such a small firm to audit then? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? You know, I always wondered that, though. I never asked, of course, but what I can say is that, yes, we are a relatively undersized firm, but seriously, some of the best accounts in the country work here. Financial man spoken like a true salesman? <laughs> no, no, no. Look, people don't need a lot of convincing when they know you're being honest with them, so. Well, you might be right, but in any case, did you happen to notice anything out of the ordinary about their books? No, no, but of course, if I would have, you know, I would have brought it to someone's attention. Whose attention might that have been? A superior, maybe? No, no, a colleague, perhaps. You know, someone who could be in a position to help me out with it. Well, the reason I'm asking is because a couple days ago, I was assigned the Michael Dennett case, and not even four hours after I received the case, this was on my desk with no return label. I thought you said you worked for the Department of the Treasury. I do. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... It's been unusual, an assassination case. Bit out of your job description, don't you think? Weird, isn't it? Oh, I almost forgot. This came too, which, honestly, I'm having a hard time making sense of that one. <laughs> you know, you don't seem like a man who has a hard time making sense of much of anything, Mr. London. And here we are. Yeah. Here we are. Look, Fisher. <clears throat> I don't know what your game is, and right now I really don't care. I just need to know if these look real. If Michael Dennett was lying, I need to know that. Look, Mr. London, for a man in your position, looks, they're irrelevant. All that matters is if they are or are not, you know? The definitive proof, that's what you need, right? Look, you could walk into Dennett Industries today and ask for a copy of their year and reports. They're probably gonna match the ones you already have, you know? Whether or not you believe that, <laughs> that's on you. I mean, you seem quite skeptical. You know what you are? You're one of those people who sees the world for how it is and not how it's presented, you know? Which is pretty much the opposite of how everyone else sees it. <laughs> Blissfully ignorant, you know, let's be honest. 
think of it like this. Imagine a world where people saw BNC Mortgage for what it was long before Lehman had to close them down. I mean, what kind of world are we living in today then? I mean, that's because people from the world of the elite, they live and die by the emission of facts every day. And Mr. London, you work for them. Where are you going with this, Mr. Fisher? Perhaps the people you work for are just as corrupt as the people they chase. Well, then they're not my people. They're your people. I mean, whether you want them to be or not, that's irrelevant to the fact. I mean, they need you now. You just don't move against their interests, right? Oh, all right. Look, Mr. London, you came in here and you're talking about Denon Industries committing a major violation of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. That is a huge accusation. And now I don't know much, but I know that when we checked their books, they were clean. So proving this with the evidence that you have right here in federal court, which is where this will end up, that's an uphill battle. Yeah. Rich people don't make it easy for you to take their money away. No, they do not. But we're not talking about overcompensation for a CEO. No, we're talking about people hiding money. You know, where are they hiding it? Why are they hiding it, you know? Not easy questions to answer, but questions you will need to know the answer of if you ever want to get this case anywhere near a judge. Yeah, don't I know it. You're gonna need good friends. You got any? Maybe. Look, Mr. Lennon, I'll tell you what. I'll go back through and look through some of their books, see if anything sticks out as unusual or whatnot. And if I find something, I got your number, okay? Now, as much as I hate to shortcut our little chit chat, I have some other matters to attend to, so thank you for your time. Secretary, do you have a moment? I have a few minutes, London. Sir, some new information has presented itself regarding Michael Dennett's assassination. We have reason to believe that Michael Dennett's security team was made up of four people, not five, like originally reported. Evidence also suggests that one of these men was actually part of the crew that helped infiltrate the house. But there were five men contracted by Porter Smith, so he had to be part of Tenet security. But you see, this man was outfitted with ammunition for weapons that Porter Smith doesn't purchase. Look, he didn't have any ID, so I ran forensics. You ID'd this man? I did. Turns out he works for a company called Newman House. Newman House is a private security firm, sir. And Newman House is entirely owned by Dennett Industries, but it's the smallest company in their portfolio. So why would Dennett contract Porter Smith if he has his own security firm? Because, Mr. Secretary, I think this assassination was staged. <laughs> staged? What are you talking about, London? So he had himself assassinated. You're, you're telling me that he committed suicide. No, 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 no. I think Dennett knew that someone or some group of people were coming after him or most likely they had some sort of information about the company, then it must have known who these people were because he contracted Newman House, which because then industries is so diversified, it's practically hidden in their portfolio. Newman House posed as an expendable crew to take part in the assassination. 
How else do you think these guys knew every ancillary thing about Dennis' property? Jamming his sonar, cutting the silent alarm, a hard copy of the security footage. I mean, these guys knew everything because they were connected. Whoever it was that they were trying to weed out was obviously smarter than Dennis, and that's probably why he double-crossed it. So, what part of your investigation has any basis of factual evidence, rather than your mere speculation and inference? The writing's on the wall, and then whoever did this is part of a terrorist organization seeking intel on the operations of the United States government. Whatever you're talking about sounds like a WikiLeak. What part of your investigation makes any sense? What part of my investigation doesn't make sense? I mean, why is the Department of Treasury so interested in this case? Why did you outsource an agent to work on it? And why were so many obvious facts left out of the report? I'm curious. You need to watch your fucking tone, London, and see where you fit in this pecking order. You're a soldier. You take orders. Someone in my position? No, that's a world you don't understand. So don't try to act like you're above it. You have 48 hours to bring me credible suspects, or I'll see to it that you are reassigned. So fuck off. Fisher, can you state for the record that in exchange for your testimony here today, you have not been promised any amnesty or immunity for any crimes you may have committed in relation Jesus. to this investigation? No promises. Now, Mr. Fisher, you currently work for a Virginia Beach accounting firm called Standard & Fisher? That's correct. But prior to that, you were Marine Force Recon, is that true? It is. And your last recorded mission was seven years ago in Azerbaijan, but was this actually your last mission? No, it was not. What was? My last mission was a covert FBI operation stateside. It was called South End. What was the objective of South End? Operation South End's objective was to spy on and assassinate high value targets in the United States. Who were these targets? Anybody, bureaucrats, politicians, anybody the government wanted gone but didn't want people to know about it. Went through South End. And why does nobody know about this operation? <laughs> You never heard about South End because it had no congressional approval. It was an off-the-books project funded entirely by embezzling money from Dennett Industries sales revenues in exchange for DI receiving favorable tech contracts with the U.S. military. So, how were these missions carried out? Soldiers were recruited from different branches of the military and brought home and placed under the employment of one of two firms. Newman House, owned entirely by Michael Dennett, and Porter Smith. Basically, privately owned death squads with no clients, just hundreds of millions of dollars being funneled into them with no paper trail that could lead back to the U.S. government. Who's in charge of South End? There were five. David Porter, Carson Smith, FBI Director James McAvery, your boy Michael Dennett, and the man who ran the whole thing. Alexander Davis, Secretary of the United States Treasury Department. So long as Dennett kept funding the project, Davis saw to it that his company never got charged with any financial crime. A lot of people died. A couple of people got really rich. And you never actually participated in Operation South End, is that correct? Nope. Once I figured out what the mission was about, I opted for a transfer. Not long after, you were honorably discharged from the Marines? That's right. Why did Dennett Industries come to you to handle their auditing? I don't know. But once he figured out we were going to expose the whole operation, people got killed gunned down people who didn't know anything about any of this and he was coming for me next then it died before he could tell davis about me that's why davis brought you in he needed someone to figure out where this all started from mr fisher did you kill michael, michael Dennett? yes i did look these guys they killed people i knew good people who were just doing their jobs all right and now his scumbag friends are still out there walking around with blood on their hands like there isn't a problem in the world. So as far as I'm concerned, my mission isn't over, sir. 
Okay. I think we're done here. <laughs> now what you wanted to hear, huh, London boy? What do you want me to say, huh, London? Everything's good. Everything's going to be all right. Let me tell you something. Nothing about any of this is pretty all right. Look, all right, these people, they do not care, all right? They have political power and they have wealth and they will kill anyone who threatens either of those two things. You have got to let me finish this. <laughs> yeah, leave it in the hands of a psychopathic vigilante that probably has loads of PTSD. Brilliant idea. Which one of us are you talking about? I was in, I was in Afghanistan before they brought me here. 18. 18 confirmed kills is what I had. I killed 18 people and they called me a hero. Sometimes I didn't even know why I was supposed to kill them. I was just doing what I was told. I was a soldier, like you. Try to try to come up with things in your head to try to justify what you've done. Truth is, I never really knew if what I was doing was the right thing to do or not. Never. Not then. I bet you're not wondering that now, huh? Fuck's sake, Fisher, you can't just shoot your way out of this one. We have to finish this the right way. And what way is that, huh? the right way. Why did you break into Michael Dennett's house? Evidence. I was trying to get evidence. He's got the whole operations file on his computer. I know he does. It was encrypted though, so I couldn't get through. So everything I got, I gave to you because I knew you could piece it together. When I didn't get what I was looking for, I tried to get Michael Dennett to publicly confess about the whole thing, but then he tried to shoot me. At the department, there were these uh, things called level five security drives. I bet you need one to open that file. <laughs> You've got one, don't you? That's how we're gonna make this stick. We're gonna get that file and put it in front of a fucking judge. Look, London, I can't tell you how much it means to me what you're doing here, but I gotta be the one to end this. No. What do you mean, no? Davis doesn't know who you are. And we have to keep it that way. But you have to make sure that we see this thing through to the end. There's a girl, analyst at the Treasury Department. She's young, but she can finish this. You found me, you can find her. Do you not just listen to what I just said? The whole department is compromised, London. Listen to me. This girl is the key to making this happen. If you don't get this to her, it dies with both of us. And that's a fact. So what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to get you that file. And then either Davis puts a bullet in me, or I put one in him. Can I ask you something? It was that when I met you at your firm, you seemed completely different. Everything, your voice was different. <laughs> it's not really much of a question now, is it, huh? You know what I mean. <laughs> All right. I don't... Like, accounting, I guess makes me happy, it makes me feel like a, a different person, you know, a better person, I guess. Cleaning guns in a garage just reminds me of the hell I was in all those years ago. Yeah, too right. Yeah. You know, my outfit, 
They had a name for me over there. They called me the wolf. <laughs> in uh, extreme situations, I would adopt the persona, you know, act like a completely different person. I would get very eccentric, you know. <laughs> you know wolves, they, they tend to adjust the pitch of their howl depending on the situation they're in, so I guess that's why it stuck. And people thought it was cool, you know, they thought it was like a battle cry, but to be honest, you know, to be honest, I was just scared. And that's how I dealt with it. <laughs> it happened when I went into Dennett's house. It just reminded me of how much I hate doing shit like that. You know I'm one of the lucky ones, right? Because when I came home, you know, I had, a, I had a purpose. I had another life. But too many men and women, they go over there, they're ready to lay it all down. They come home and they're just, they're lost. Nowhere to go. You know, they're heroes, but... They're forgotten. It happens way more than it should. So, Scar the 47U. I'll take the Scar. <laughs> scar it is then. Scar it is.
What's the situation? You know those friends you were talking about? You know, for your sake, I hope one of them's a good lawyer. Not too excited to be talking to me, huh, Davy boy? Ah, uh, London. And why would I not be happy to hear from you? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because I'm looking at 200 pages of you breaking every goddamn law I can think of. You're smarter than that, Drake. You need to walk away. You see, that's the thing. You're not really calling the shots anymore. Am I not now? When I was in the CIA, I was in more gunfights than I could count. I should be dead, but I'm not. You know what they call that, Davy boy? Borrowed time. I'm the biggest problem to a guy like you, because I'm already dead. You got a choice to make, Davy. Either you let justice come to your front door, or you do what I did. You can take matters into your own hands. Clock's ticking, Davy. You know where to find me. Nice to see you made it. I'm a patriot, London. Is that right? It is right. Because of me, invaluable information was obtained. Congress swayed in our favor. Our nation's a safer place because of it. Because of what I did. You ordered hits from your penthouse wearing Armani. It doesn't matter what angle you look at it. Sometimes bad things yield good results. And what about those accounts you had killed? Were they threats to our nation's safety? What were they? Unfortunate. Call it collateral. But sometimes in war there's casualties. You should know that better than anyone, London. So that's what this is? A war? <laughs> Give me a fucking break. You not know, remind you you were paid a federal salary by the CIA to kill people? <laughs> not necessarily the moral ambassador yourself. You're right. I was a killer. And I killed for your people. You want to shoot me? All right. Or, you could let things happen the right way. Because we both know that whatever happens from here on out is inevitable.
I don't, I don't have any money or anything. Sit down, Miss Carter. Drake London was killed last night. He, uh, he died in a gunfight. Do you know him well? Not particularly. Yeah. Well, your boss put a bunch of lead in him, so... Yeah. What? I bet information like that changes some things. Doesn't it? People weren't who you thought they were. Before he died, he asked if I could give you this. He thought you might know what to do with it. He died believing that. But this is about more than him, isn't it? And I don't know you. So let's get to know you. Do you know what that is? Look, I... I don't know. I barely fucking knew that guy. Yeah, that's not what I asked you, Miss Carter. So let's try this again. Do you know what that is? No. No. <laughs> you know, you would be amazed at how much you can learn about someone just by looking in their eyes. You feel that? That staggering emotion. Do you know what that is? That's fear, and that genuine fear. Imagine living in that. Miss Carter, I would recommend you do not lie to me again. Okay. So, one more time. Do you know what's in this folder? Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. They threatened to kill you if you talked, didn't they? Those guys weren't exactly good at cooking their books. They killed your friends right in front of you. I know who you are. You are not an easy man to kill, to put it lightly. You were the one who pointed out the discrepancy in the income statement, weren't you? Davis slipped up. He outsourced a guy. A smart guy. So I played a hand. Yeah, and that guy's dead now, Annette. So how about we give him the justice he deserves? The justice all the people in that folder deserve. I can't do anything anymore. I went all in. You can't do anything, you don't believe you can do anything. Because those are two very different things, Miss Carter. <laughs> you know, I heard a story about you. Yeah, an idealistic 11-year-old. 
What happened to her? Things didn't turn out the way she expected. Okay. So what about that company from Newark that you got on a RICO indictment because they were embezzling money to fund the sex trafficking ring? Hmm. Or all those fronts that were laundering money for the mob so they could keep pumping heroin into low-income neighborhoods in Philly? You know what I think? I think you're someone who's not even 25 years old and has done more to change the world than most people do in a lifetime. I'm not like you in that. I try to be, but I'm not. I kill people. I murder them. And yeah, they're bad people, but I'm not naive. It's a flawed philosophy. But that's not you. No, you represent something dignified, something right. Something I can never be. Look, I know you think these people won't stop. They'll just keep coming. That they might do something to you. I think we both know if I'm here, that's not gonna happen. Everything you need is right here and then. Some things you just can't run from. Sometimes you have to fight. Why are you so sure about me? I could be lying. I could burn that when you leave. Like I said, you can learn a lot about someone just by looking in their eyes. I know you won't. You could have gone anywhere. But you're doing it for them. Brendan, I'm really sorry that this is what it's come to for you. Don't be. This is what I'm supposed to be.